So my name is uh, Professor Terry Jones and I'm the director of the Liverpool Head and Neck uh, Centre. Uh, I have a particular uh, clinical and academic interest in uh, HPV related uh, oropharynx cancer. So HPV stands for human papillomavirus. Um, there are probably about 200 different types of uh, human papillomavirus or, uh, or HPV. Uh, we call these genotypes. Um, the majority of these are harmless or cause benign disease such as warts. However, a small number of genotypes, uh, particularly genotypes 16 and 18, have the ability to cause cancer. In particular, they're able to cause cervix cancer in women, they're able to cause anal cancer and oropharynx cancer, that's cancer of the uh, throat in men and women, and penile cancer in men. Genotype, genotype 16 is the main cause of oropharynx cancer, which as I've already said is con uh, cancer of the throat, and more specifically cancer of the tonsil or the tissue at the back of the tongue. So like most viruses, um, the, the virus infects the cells where it enters the body. So if we breathe in a virus or if we swallow a virus, then typically that virus will infect the cells of the lining of our throat, as is the case with the common cold. Um, once it infects these cells, the virus then hijacks the molecular machinery of the cell it infects to replicate itself, to produce lots more uh, copies of the virus itself. In most cases, and with most viral infections, our infections, our immune system fights off the uh, viral infection and we simply uh, get cured and, and rid ourselves of the virus infection. However, for, for reasons that we don't understand a small number of cases, the virus is not cleared in the case of HPV and remains dormant. At this point in time, we have no evidence that when the virus is dormant, that it can be passed on to any other individual at all. It then happens that in an even smaller uh, number of individuals, um, the virus stops being dormant. It turns on the cell machinery of the cell that is infected. But the consequence of this is that that host cell replicates in an uncontrolled fashion. And that's the way that cancer is actually caused. As for why the tonsil and the back of the tongue, this is uh, almost definitely because of the tissue that uh, occurs in these areas, which is lymphoid tissue. Um, lymphoid tissue appears particularly susceptible to infection with human papillomavirus, particularly uh, specialised cells that are deep in crypts that occur in these tissues. So um, HPV is very common. Pretty much everyone um, is infected with multiple genotypes of HPV at the time they become sexually active. So typically for most people that would be late teens or early 20s. HPV is really easy to transmit from person to person, especially between sexual partners. However, most people will not even know that they've been infected. They'll have an asymptomatic infection and they'll eradicate the virus within 18 uh, to 24 months of being infected. It probably follows that the more sexual partners an individual has, the more likely and the quicker they will be to catch HPV infection. But it's important to realise that patients will only be infected once. Once they're infected and your immune system eradicates it, patients will then be immune to further infection with HPV. However, in a small number of individuals, we're now aware that the, the virus will not be completely eradicated Rather, it, it exists in a dormant or latent form. In these individuals, an even smaller number are unfortunate to go on, to go on and develop oropharynx cancer driven by the virus itself. So whilst individuals have to be sexually active to catch HPV in the first place, there's no convincing link between the number of sexual partners compared to the rest of the population and the risk of developing oropharynx cancer, despite what's reported in the popular press. This reporting and the um, resulting common misunderstanding is really unhelpful as it stigmatises this illness and causes potential relationship problems. And it's up to uh, clinicians like us to debunk this myth. 
So as we've discussed above, um, HPV is highly contagious, but there's no evidence that patients who have latent virus or oral pharynx cancer are infectious to others. No, this is totally unnecessary. So if you have oral pharynx cancer, there's no reason to avoid intimacy or kissing. As we've discussed previously, there's no evidence that you can tra transmit the virus to others. So again, as we've explained above, when the virus infects a host cell, it takes over the cellular machinery to replicate itself. As part of that process, a normal cellular protein called P16 is increased in cancers that are caused by HPV. An increase of P16 is rare in non-HPV cancers, and so the presence of, HP, of P16 in an oral France cancer is used, along with other factors, uh, to confirm that the cancer is actually caused by HPV. So very positively, we now know that HPV-caused cancers are much easier to cure than non-HPV-caused cancers. And so having an HPV-caused oropharynx cancer has a much better prognosis than non-HPV-caused oropharynx cancer. So there are several treatment options. Surgery or radiotherapy can be used alone or in combination. And another standard of care treatment would be to use chemotherapy with radiotherapy combined. The exact treatment that you will actually be offered will depend on, um, on, on the site and size of your cancer, your fitness and your age, and the expertise available in your local centre. The central challenge of, of, of treating patients with um, oropharynx cancer is to maximise cure, but also to minimise the effect on swallowing function. So whilst most patients will struggle to swallow uh, during treatment and in the early stages after treatment, most patients will have uh, good swallowing function. That said, patients who have radiotherapy or chemoradiotherapy uh, may well end up with a dry mouth that could make swallowing difficult. Only a very small percentage of patients will have long-term sw severe swallowing problems after treatment. As we've already discussed above, when you have oropharynx cancer, you don't really have HPV. And so in simple terms, removing the cancer removes HPV. However, unfortunately, a, a very small number of patients will go on to develop a second HPV-related cancer after successful treatment of their first. Yes, you may well be. It's uh, important to ask your doctors what clinical trials are available in your treating centre. In Liverpool, for example, we have three clinical trials that are available for patients with HPV-positive or oropharynx cancer, uh, which are currently recruiting. These are the PATHOS, the best of, and the COMPARE clinical trials. So happily, these days, there's a highly effective uh, vaccination available, which uh, prevents people from getting four types of uh, high-risk HPV infection. These are numbers 6, 11, 16 and 18. As this uh, vaccine, vaccine needs to be given before exp exposure to the virus and therefore before uh, individuals become sexually active, the vaccine is given to school children in year 8, a second dose being given 6 to 12 months after the first. Girls have been offered vaccination in the UK since 2008 and boys since 2019. In fact, research we conducted in Liverpool led to the government reversing its earlier decision not to vaccinate boys, um, so that now boys are vaccinated as well as girls. Individuals um, can have catch-up vaccinations until the age of 25 after which it becomes less effective because it's more likely that patients will already have caught uh, and uh, HPV uh, infection. So men who have sex with men are also eligible to be vaccinated up to and including the age of 45. It's important to note that the vaccine has proved to be enormously effective in reducing cases of HPV related cancer and some unpleasant benign HPV diseases such as anogenital warts.
by now across the world millions of people have been uh, vaccinated with an HPV vaccine proving that it is extremely safe and effective and so there's no reason at all for any fit and healthy child not to be vaccinated when offered. So there's no biological rationale for vaccinating adults or patients with oropharynx cancer who are sexually active. Current vaccines, as we've just discussed, are prophylactic. They're designed to create immunity only in patients who have not been infected with HPV. Most adults already have been infected, as we discussed previously, and anyone with HPV uh, positive oropharynx cancer has by definition been previously infected, and so vaccination makes no sense at all.